When we decide to model unidirectional composites, the first thing we need to consider is what the virtual domain should look like. You may decide to model it with either a 2D or 3D domain. But whatever the dimension you choose, one critical issue that you must consider is the distribution pattern of the fibers within the matrix medium. In this video, I will show you how to undertake unit cell modeling of UD composites with a square arrangement of fibers and show results for three sets of uniaxial and shear load cases. Let us sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Okreke. Welcome to CM Videos. This is a YouTube channel where we try to help you create effective computational modeling solutions to whatever computational problem that you're dealing with. So the outline that we're going to work with, we'll first start by defining the square unit cell, designing and um, defining what the square unit cell is. Then we'll move on to the design the virtual domain, how that is going to be. Then finally, setting up the model in Abacus before we show the analysis of the simulation result resulting from the simulation. Now, let's consider this is a typical um, representative volume element of a square arrangement of our unit cell. So what we see here are the dimensions of this composite, basically a unidirectional composite with a cuboidal RV size of length given and also the height given. The fiber diameter we've chosen is a 15 micron uh, diameter in size. Now the, mat the matrix that we're going to be considering is basically this, it's got a volume fraction of 40% and the fiber is a glass with a volume fraction of 60%. If this is the kind of content that you like, please I do encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. So when contents like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. I also want to highlight that there is a CM videos inside that group, which I say regularly send every week. Newsletters talk about behind the scene in, in CM videos and more about products that are available on CM videos and also offer my perspective on a lot of computational modeling issues. If you're interested in these kind of things, please do subscribe to this uh, CM videos inside that group. So what's the arrangement of the fiber? Let's think about the design of the unit cell and the arrangement of the fiber. So first, let's say we start with a fiber and that fiber has to then have a square arrangement. So around the arrangement of this single fiber will be a square arrangement. And some of the parameters that we need to be aware of first is the size, the edge size of this square arrangement. And this can actually be calculated using this function, which is a relationship between this edge and the diameter of the fiber, as well as the volume fraction. So this gives you an idea of the packing um, density of this square arrangement. Now, the other thing that we want to look at for is the distance from the central fiber and the edge, the edge, the outermost edge of this. And this in this case is just half of the edge length S. The radial di this distance from the center to a corner of that can also be calculated. And this is basically S times the cosine of 45 degrees. And once we look at all that, then we can use that information to basically populate the system to create the square arrangement. And this becomes a picture of our square arrangement of the fiber that we are going to work with. So let's just put some numbers to that. So the first thing we need to think of here is that distance S for a volume, a diameter of 50 microns and a volume fraction of 60%, which in this case is point, you know, 0 0.60. So we have, have an edge length of 24.27 microns. The base, this separation distance from the center to the edge will be half of that, which is 12.135. And then the R value is 17.16 micron. So the case study that we're going to be studying in this case will be first a tensile case in the fiber direction. They will now move on to the transverse direction. So there will be an X axis transverse direction, which is shown here, and also a Y axis transverse direction or tensile loading, which will be shown which is shown here. This is the kind of simulation that we're going to do. And then we'll now move on to uh, shear deformation on the XY plane as shown here, the shear deformation on the YZ plane as shown here, and finally a shear deformation on the ZX plane. So just a question of the day, I would like you to tell me what distribution fiber distribution pattern do you normally use during your modeling? Is it an ordered arrangement like the cases that I'm showing here or a random arrangement? It will really be interesting to know what is your modeling fiber distribution pattern that you use in your modeling. Also, I'd like you to tell me within the comment section of this 
video which other fiber arrangements do you want me to show modeling of already i have videos talking about the hexagonal arrangement and some of the fiber arrange random fiber arrangement maybe there is another configuration that you want me to look at so please do tell me in the comment section of this video so that i can consider that and then we can move on with that so let's get into abacus and begin to set up this modeling okay here we are in abacus so the first thing we're going to do is basically to create the fibers so we'll start with creating a fiber so i'm just going to call this a fiber and it's going to be made by extrusion and the dimensions that we talked about will be that dimension of b which is minus 12.135 minus 12.135 so that's one corner of that and then the other corner will be 12.135 so that's basically our square arrangement that we start off with so we're going to use that as our system so we create a circle right in the middle and this circle will be 7.50 because it's a diameter of 12.50 microns then the next thing we're going to translate this system into the different sides so we're creating a copy so starting from the center here to that point so that represents one circle so we'll do another translation copy of this fiber from the center to that corner okay now the last thing we need to do is to create a copy so we'll select these two and we'll translate it from that point to that point so that represents our fiber arrangement with a square distribution so i'm just going to delete all this because this is just a reference to help us create the fibers that we want so i press down shift and select all of them and then delete that so this becomes our fiber arrangement okay so we'll click done so and the depth we wanted is 50. so we'll work this if it's 50 and this is fine so this basically is our fiber so what about the metrics so we'll just do a simple matrix so the metrics will be quite easy so it's same dimensions of minus 12.135 minus 12.135 and then 12.135 so that's the matrix okay and obviously we want it to be as deep as 50 microns as well so we've got that then we we'll just go into the matrix assembly section and bring the two together all right so basically we've got a fiber and the matrix arrangement in the way they need to be then we need to match them so we're going to say okay uh, square unit cell so we could call it square unit cell so it's going to be merged suppressed so we'll retain all intersections so we'll select all that so that gives us the structure that we want and now if we go to the part module we could see okay there's a square unit cell there we'll double click on that then we need to trim up the fiber edges so we'll click on this create cut extrude and it says select the plane so clearly we want to work with this plane and we want to work with that edge all right so this gives us that so basically need to select from here to there and then we'll begin a build box a big box around it so if then this goes through so basically we now have our fiber system in the correct way that it should be so let's try and mesh so we'll select that so okay maybe five could be so we could think about two you know something a fine mesh would be probably appropriate and then we'll select on that and then try and use a sweep mesh hex dominated media axis okay so that's fine and then we'll mesh now the other things that we need to then do is we, let's just think about our material so the first one here is our e-glass fiber so our e-glass fiber would have 73 e to power 3 and then 0 0.2 will be the properties in this direction 73 e to power 9 for gigapascal and nothing else really to include and then the other one is the polypropylene so the property will have an elastic property um, and the poisson ratio and then we get the plasticity the plasticity which and 0 0.3 so this is a strain so we can then say okay this is a fiber section and we know that this has to be e glass fiber and then what about the section for the metrics so this is the pp section for polypropylene so this goes in here so that gives us our properties then we could do a section assignment by selecting okay this is just the metrics alone and we select and assign the pp section and then we select everything and hold down shift deselect 
hold down control they select the matrix leaving only the fiber so by clicking on the matrix so that leaves only the fiber and then we'll have the fiber section and then we'll just check by switching to material default so it does show what we have what we're going to do is to create sets of surfaces so x front set so this is basically the set on the front so we'll click by shift hold that shift select the front and then get the set y top set so select that pressing down shift multiple selection okay and then we'll go around and do the same for all that so that front set Then what we're going to do is to find what this corner is so by using the query button and then we're basically looking at the point and select that point and click done so if we look here so what it's saying is that point is basically defined by this so i'm going to copy that okay and then we need to create a reference point very close to that point so if i paste that here so basically, instead of making it 12 in the X direction, why not let's make it 15 in that direction and then click enter. So we've basically got that point there. So we need to create also a reference point set and this will be attached to this point. So this gives us all the information that we need here. So then we can now go and create a step. So, so a static general step will be fine. If you want to do a dynamic analysis, that's okay. Uh, history output so i'm going to call it a reference point history output and this would be obviously attached to the reference point that we've chosen and these are the variables we're interested in all the reaction forces in x and y direction and the displacement in the x and y direction now we think about the boundary conditions so what i'm going to first do here is to say okay this will be x back ruler and that will be initial boundary condition associated with that so we'll have to work with the set and x bat highlight and we are going to constrain it in the one direction okay the one direction so and then we'll do the same y base roller so this will be according to the base and we we'll constrain it in the two direction and then the next one is z back roller so basically the back set will constrain it in the three direction okay so why not create a load so we we'll use a boundary condition to create our load because we want to use a displacement boundary condition and that will be attached to a loading set reference set so we we'll start with this case so this system in this direction is 24 in the x direction so why not let's use let's say five something around 20 percent okay so this basically is at that going in this direction and we need to also introduce some constraints so constraint equation and this will be a, a canonical equation and we're basically having to make a connection one to the set of the x front set so this is the x front set the growth freedom one the growth freedom one linked to the reference point and minus one so what we've done here is that the behavior of the reference point now is connected directly to the behavior of that front face so then we can go at the top here and then rename that and we'll call it okay so square unit cell x tens so this is for the x tens our case all right so we've got that then we could do the same for the y tens case so we'll just use that and change that to a y tens our case okay so with the y tens our case every other thing remains exactly how it is we change our loading clearly our loading will not be in the x direction anymore our loading will be in the y direction which is that okay so it's now acting up but the move the way the constraint equation will have to be attached will not be on the x front face now but actually on the y top because the load applied at this reference point will have to be transferred to the behavior on the top and that's all that we need to do with that so okay let's create another one okay here are the results of the simulations and the first thing we are going to see here is the x tensile deformation the deformation along the x-axis and it shows 
they clearly the fiber deforming and the matrix deforming as well so if we switch that to plastic strain so we can see what's happening here so there's a bit of a lot of plasticity along the in the matrix and the fiber remains undeformed so that's what you see for the inertial x tensile direction so this is also the next one for the uniaxial y tensile deformation so in this case we are pulling the body in the y direction and again you see similar kind of result as we saw before so the plastic strain clearly shows what's happening around here so with a lot of plasticity in the matrix in that region and, and that's that's sort of what you see so again it's being put up so it's contracting in this axis so this is what you see and finally, we show the last of the uniaxial cases, which is the Z tensile deformation. So in this case, the body is being pulled in this axis, and you can see that the fiber is taking a lot of the loading in this model. So the greatest load is on the fiber, and the matrix sort of remains unstrained, which is what you experience for a uniaxial simulation. So let's look at the shear cases. So what we see here is the uniaxial the shear case, the XY shear. And clearly what you can see here is that the body is being sheared in this y direction. So it's shearing in that direction and the fiber, the matrix, the fiber remains in place and the fiber is just kind of, the matrix is adjusting around the fiber. So, so this is a shear stress deformation. And then let's look at another one. So what we see here is the YZ shear, YZ shear. And what you can see, okay, it's being sheared on the top and there's this nice behavior that you see on the edge here which shows you the shear deformation in the YZ plane. So the fiber in the front is deforming a lot and this is not. So you get some interesting results in terms of the YZ shear. So this is the last case for the ZX shear. So the ZX shear is what we see here. So again, it goes in that direction, showing you a deformation with the fiber undergoing some kind of a buckling or a kinking deformation. So that's what we see here. Um, and then you can look at the plastic strain Okay, so again, most of the loading is being concentrated along the edges of the fiber. So that's what you see here. So those are the results from the contour plot. So the last thing we're going to do is to get the extract the stress strain data associated with this. So let's go back to the extensor our case. So the last thing we're going to do is to look at the history output file. So again, we'll press on this history output file. So either we go through history, but let's use a field output. So if you continue with the field output, so we want to use a unique nodal. So we want to use a unique nodal. And within that unique nodal, what we are clearly looking for is the displacement in the one axis and the shear in the one axis, because that's what we find here. So the shear and the, on the one axis. And what element are we looking for? So we're using an element and we're linking it to the represent the reference point. So we then plot. So this will give us the result of our simulation for that axis. So all we need to then do with this is to, as usual, we'll do plugin tools, Excel's utility. If you want some more information about this, please look at the video in the card where I show how you can do this for another kind of material. So, and then when you accept that so it will show you the result of that so this is the result that you get just for the shear case so we'll copy that value here so i've already formatted this particular case so i'm going to paste this data in here okay and then the force data is there the strain data clearly is there so the uniaxial x divided by the deformation in the z axis in the in this x axis which is the width 24.7 and then the shear stress the shear stress the stress is basically the force divided by the cross-sectional area which are those two data so we apply that and then you get a result here so with the yz case so we'll go through the same process of history outputs now what do we get a unique node out so y z so that means the body is moving in the z axis but on the y outward normal plane so we're going to switch that to u3 and rf3 okay and then what element are we using for that so it's the reference node out set and then you plot so this will give you the this deformation in the z explain another thing we're going to do is to compare the data that we found so again the tensile cases seem to be working well the z tensile cases as well as the shear cases they're all very interesting there's some issues around the values of the shear strength so because some of the body didn't really 
fell properly in shape so that's that's something else you know what constantly maybe introducing some kind of cohesive zone and allowing for damage especially in shear would would be important for this kind of simulation but for now you know this is what we get so that's all i wanted to show in this video if you want to watch some more videos i've got this video here which is about how you can undergo a remodeling of a unidirectional composite comprehensively and this will help you and i've got this other video where i showed how to model a hexagonal unit cell again for an RV modeling of a unidirectional composite and thank you for watching so far and i'll see you in the next video bye bye